Hello YouTube, I'm Tom and Brad and we're back in King Gen making some more 7 Days Design Maps. In this tutorial I'm going to walk you through extracting and editing the roads or the splat files on your own 7 Days to Die map. Let's get started. Well, because I know we all love to cut straight to the point, I've skipped making the map in King Gen, but there's a link at the top of the screen here that will guide you through that if you're not sure how to do it. So looking at this map, I can see that the, the roads are actually very good. If I have a quick zoom in, we can just see there that that grey looking road is a main road, so it would be tarmac, and then you can see the brown one there going out to these little towns would be a dirt road, and it looks pretty good. Quite happy with it. I like that shape. However, this is a dead zone. Nothing's going to happen down here. It's crying out for a road to come out and weave through some of these buildings. So how would we do that? First of all, we need to find the splat3 file. So if I go into Open King Gen Worlds, this is the map that's behind here that I've just created. I've renamed it to it's splat test 2 If I open that up, I can see in there, there is the splat file. Now if I just double click on it, it's nothing. You can't see anything. Now this could be a stumbling block for a lot of people and it sort of puts you off because there's a bit of a trick to this. Just while we're here, note that there is also the preview file. If I double click on that, we've got a copy conveniently of our map there and we're going to use that in a moment as well. So we're using two pieces of software to do this. Obviously, there's the King Gen software and also the GIMP software. And why am I using GIMP? Well, it's because it's free. If you prefer to use Photoshop, you go ahead and do that. But I'm using GIMP because anybody can download it free of charge and basically get on with it. So I need to edit this splat file. So if I right click on it and go up to open with and across to GIMP, and here it is opened in GIMP. And again, it doesn't look like anything. And you think, well, how the heck can I work with that? Well, the big trick to this, the first thing that you need to do is look on the right hand side here and notice where it says layers. There's the splat three file that we're working on. But just to the right of layers, it says channels. And if we look there, you can almost see that there are some lines in there telling us that there's some information in there, but you can't see what it is. The way to do that is just simply to turn off the eye next to the alpha layer. Now that's the alpha layer in channels. So if I turn that eye off, there we go. So the red ones are the main roads and the green would be the dirt roads. And if you're wondering what these little crosses are, they are small villages where you've got a group of four POIs next to each other. Now at this stage, we can't really do any editing. There's another step that we need to do first. If we go back to layers and notice that we have the splat layer there and back in channels, we have the different channels. What I want to do is to duplicate that, but only make a copy of the visible layers. So not copy the alpha layer as well. You'll see what I mean in a second. So if I say new from visible, it's created another layer and in the preview we can already see that you can see all of the things. I'm going to turn off this splat layer now. So all we've got on the screen is actually the visible layer. From here we could start drawing the roads where we want them. However, there are already POIs placed on this map. And if I just start drawing, I might accidentally go over the POIs. So what I'd like to do is to bring in that preview that we had a quick look at and use that as a template so I can draw around the POIs. If we go back to our, well, my splat test two folder where we got the splat three file from, and remember we looked at preview. Well, if I just right click on that and say, open with GIMP, and you can see back in the GIMP software that it's, we've now got two windows open and this is how it shows them in this software. We've got this file that we can work on and then a separate file here, which is the preview. Now what I want to do is make a copy of this and paste it into this file as a separate layer. Now, sounds a bit intimidating, but don't worry, I'm going to tell you exactly how to do it. In the layers section here, in the one where we've got our roads, I'm going to do a, a right click and then say, new layer. I'll give it, actually it's already got the name in preview. So I was going to name it preview. So that's fine. So we'll say, okay. And now we've got a preview layer, but it's blank as you can see by the preview. So if I go into the preview file, make sure I'm on that layer. I'm going to hit control A to make sure I've selected the whole picture, then control C to copy it. Then I'm going to go back to my other file, the roads file. Make sure I've selected the preview layer. Then I'm going to do 
Control V for paste. And now we have a floating layer in our image. We need to promote that to a, an anchored layer, if you like. So it's a proper physical layer. And I can do that just by right clicking on where it says floating selection and say anchor layer. And now we've got a solid layer. That seems a little bit over the top, but that's just how it works. So just to refresh what we've got here, on the very bottom of our three layers, we have our original file, which we're no longer interested in. The next layer up are all of the visible roads, so we can work on them. And then the one above that is just the preview, so we know where the POIs are. Now at this point, I can't really draw on the visible layer because I can't see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this top layer slightly more uh, opaque or more transparent by using this opacity slider or opacity, however you want to pronounce it. And as I drag that down, you can see we're exposing through to the layer underneath. And if I took it all the way down, there's just the layer. But what I can do is sneak it back up just enough so I can comfortably see where these POIs are, but also still clearly see the roads. Let's zoom in in this area that we're going to be working on. So in GIMP, I'm holding control. You might be used to holding alt. I know it's throwing me off a bit. So I'm going to work on the road layer, not on this preview layer. So have a look on the right hand side. Another stumbling block here that's a mistake that's very easy to make is that you work on the wrong layer. So I need to make sure I've clicked on the visible layer, which is the roads and not the preview or splat layer. So before we start drawing our roads out, we must make sure that we get the exact right color for the main roads and for the dirt roads. So I need to get that exact same color of red as it is there. And at the minute, it isn't showing us the proper red because we can see this preview layer. So I'm just going to turn that off temporarily so I can see the proper shade of red that it is. And now I can click on our foreground color or our drawing color, if you like. And you see the little teat prepared or the eyedropper. We just click on that then go over the top of the color that we want to pick up click on that and now we've sucked up that color and if you have a look there it is it's telling us that it's 25500 now you might have that view it might say 100 i find it easy to work with the 255 so just make sure you've highlighted that one if that's the way you prefer to go so I'll okay that and now i'm ready to start drawing roads with that color now um i'd like the roads to match up the width of these so i can tell you now that these roads are 10 pixels wide and i've tested that by just drawing a box and basically counting the blocks so that would be one two three four so it's 10 wide approximately let's turn our preview layer back on so we can see where the buildings are and let's go to our paintbrush now the brush itself is very important it needs to be a solid brush so if you click on your um, brush options here you can see you've got all the different shapes i'm going to pick the solid one which has got the full hardness so i look down here it says hardness 100 force 100 and the size of it um it may be set to something else but i need to set that to a size of 10 in order to draw roads the same size as these so i'll just slide that down roughly near to 10 and then i can just use the up and down arrows to get it exactly on then again, I'm going to use the control key on the keyboard and the mouse wheel to zoom in. And now from here, I'm going to choose where I want the road to go. So um, we'll go, make sure we're on the paintbrush in the left-hand side here. And we can just start drawing again, checking we're on the visible layer, which is our road layer. And now I'm going to start drawing our road. And now to me, it looks like a slightly different color. It doesn't quite look right but I'm not going to worry because I think that might be a quirk with this software because if we turn off that preview layer, that is the right color. So I'm going to wind the road down through here. We'll go around the back of these and I'll tell you what we'll do just for fun. Why don't we try going in and joining up with that road? I'm going to let it overlap and we'll come out of there and wind around here. If we go through between those ones, let me just scroll across here and then we'll go across and join up with this one and it, it does look the wrong color there but it does on my screen anyway but if i turn off preview you can see it's the right color and um, i am drawing on the, the visible layer the correct layer so let's put preview back on we'll just zoom out and have a look so there we go we've got a little bit of incentive to explore further off around here now now if you had created your own map and you had for example and um, there's a few of us working on a canyon maps at the moment and if you've got the the grand canyon and you've got that big dip and you've drawn a land bridge across from one side of the canyon to the other and you want a road to go across it 
here's an easy way of doing it. You would just simply load up your preview of your canyon map or whatever it may be, and then manually draw in the roads to go over the bridge. Now, something you have to bear in mind with this is that this doesn't physically place a new road. All it actually does is change the texture of the ground that's underneath it. So if you've got some rocky terrain and you draw this on, the road will follow the shape of the terrain. Now, for some people, that might be a good thing. For others, it might be a bad thing. If you don't like it, then you would have to physically draw the road on your height map and then draw these roads on top. So that's a hand-drawn line there. But while I'm here, I just want to show you another way of drawing uh, roads on this. And we'll do it with the dirt road this time, just for a bit of variety going to zoom in so hand drawn obviously it's wiggly it's all over the place whereas this seems to have point to point roads which would keep it nice and straight so let's say that's what we want to do we want to use this point to point technique so i need to change my color i'm going to switch off the preview again to make sure i get that exact green i'm going to click on the top layer color use the eyedropper click on the green make sure it's the right one it's 255 right in the middle so it's an easy one to remember again Okay, and now we want to draw some roads around here. So if I go back to the preview so I don't draw over the top of anything, this time instead of hand drawing with the paintbrush, this is slightly more complicated. By all means, skip this if you like. Um, but this is quite a good fun thing to do if you want to get those exact straight lines. In the top left hand side here, you can see a tool there that says paths. So the paths tool, if I click on that, now when I draw, um, where can we go from? Let's start from there. If I click once with the button and let go then click again over here I can actually draw around uh, something like this <laughs> I'd say let's just do a spiral and then we'll easily see it on the map when we're flying around uh, we'll just see a mess in the middle <laughs> So at the minute, all we've done is we've laid out a path. It's not a road yet. We need to convert that path to a road. So back on the left-hand side here, underneath the paths option, we can see right at the bottom, stroke path. So I'm going to turn this to a stroke, basically. So I make sure that we've got a selection next to stroke line. Solid color. The line width is 10, which is the size of our roads, which is fine. I'm saying that the dirt roads might be thinner, but it doesn't matter. We'll just say that it's 10. And then all I need to do is click on stroke and it will draw in those roads. Don't worry about those dots. That's just because we're still on the stroke tool. If I change to another tool, they disappear. And yeah, you can see these are a bit thicker. So maybe it's only a, a six or an eight width for dirt roads. So in order to get this into a usable form for the game, we need to make sure, first of all, we've turned off the preview layer. So we're just back to this drawing here. That's the only visible layer. Then I'm going to say export as. I need to look for the folder where my map is stored and I'll just go the long way around here just so you can see. It was on my desktop in the King Gen folder and it was in a folder called Splat Test 2. And there is Splat 3. That's the original one. If you look at it, you can see it's showing us that sort of blank textured thing there. So that's the original Splat file. All we're going to do is replace that. I'm going to export to that. We're going to replace it. All of these settings, and I'll just show you, load defaults, all of those settings are on default. Don't worry about it. Export. Okay, we'll come out of GIMP and go back to our King Gen software. In here, if we go to Open King Gen Worlds, we'll have a look at our Splat Test 2 folder, and that's our new one there. And if I double click on it now, it'll actually show you this, which doesn't seem right if you remember the other one was blank, but it's okay. This still works. So our Splat Test 2 folder, right click on it and say copy. Let's go to our 7 Days to Die Worlds folder on the left there. We'll open that up. And in there, I'm going to right click and paste. So we can't see the preview of it because this is the one we generated before. We've edited this one, but now what we're going to do is load up our edited version in 7 Days to Die and see how it works. So I'll just quickly hit F1 and then type in DM, enter hit escape, hit H to put fly mode on and then space to start flying. And then um, a few people have asked me this, how do you go, how do you do the skip forwards thing? When when you're flying, you're holding down W, but if you hold shift, you go faster. But if you just tap Q when you're doing that, you do that little boost jump. And that's a good one, a useful thing, saves you a lot of time. Okay, so we need to have a look around our map and see where we are. 
Um, we the drawings we did were southeast, weren't they? So if we go to the southeast of the map, we should eventually catch up with. Oh, hang on! I just saw the yeah. There's our very rough and ready spiral road. So that was the original road going through the middle, and uh, yeah, you get the. I'll go a bit higher, see if you can see it. Yeah, there we go. So you can see where I've gone round in circles. So that has worked. So you can see by the shape of the road here that it hasn't actually created a physical road. It's just drawn the texture on, and I'm quite happy with that. I think it looks pretty good. So bear in mind that it will follow your terrain. And obviously these tight corners are up to you, whether you draw freehand or whether you draw with the, the line tool. Yep, there we go. So that was the original road. You can see by the straight lines. And then here's our hand-drawn one. Let's just have a look at that. It wiggles round and there's no trees in the middle of it. Goes over the hills nicely and it looks pretty good. So the, the real challenge will come when you've got your own height map and you pull up your height map in the uh, GIMP software and use that as a template to draw your roads. And I'm not going to go into that in this video. I just wanted to show you the how to get started editing splat files because it's a pretty complicated thing when you first look at it and it's not easy to make sense of it. But once you know a couple of things, you can get on and create your own crazy road network as much or as little as you like in the game. Well, if you enjoyed this, uh, feel free to buy me a coffee. The link's in the description. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel. That would be fantastic. And also, we've got a Discord. If you want to jump into Discord, then have a chat with me and other fellow gamers. And thanks very much for watching. Please like the video before you leave. <laughs> thanks very much. Bye-bye.